All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken the Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And today, my good friend Elizabeth Wood is back with us. And we're talking about purification of self for the end of the age. What does all that mean? So we'll talk about that and more. We're going to talk about what's happening in human evolution now. There's always so much happening. And we're going to talk about why the purification of self is the key to freedom what's coming in the near future that we need to prepare for and how to reclaim your remem your remembrance of your true self. All that and more. We always talk about so many different things. We're going to be taking your live caller questions. There's always some wonderful processes that we do with Elizabeth. And so um, always so much fun, always high vibe, grab some water and, and <laughs> get comfortable. So for those of you who don't know Elizabeth, she's considered an advanced seer. She works on the cutting edge of galactic and quantum anthropology, trauma healing and futurism with her lifelong ability to see into and work with all dimensions. Her theoretical and psychic work has helped people all over the world. She's called the living library and Oracle. Elizabeth has spent her whole life studying anthropological theory, <laughs> quantum physics, ancient and modern medicine. She has two science degrees, including a master's in applied anthropology and her philosophies and practices bridge science and spirituality to support real change in the world. So we're gonna to talk to Elizabeth about, oh my goodness, oh so much that's happening right now and see what's going on with, uh, with Elizabeth, what she's up to right now, what we can expect in the near future. Whew, Elizabeth, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. There's Me so too. much change happening, right? And so I'm glad you're here to share your wisdom and light around what is happening with the world. So welcome back. Thank you, Laura. I'm so glad to be with you. And here in Ecuador, whenever we feel like that spin that's going on right now, everybody says, tranquilo. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, it's like the eye of a storm. And so, you know, you take a slight step right or a slight step left and you're in the storm. Right. And there's this eye of the storm that's happening energetically. It's a crossroads. It's, a, it's many different key points opening at once. But this is really trippy. So over the past week, I've been watching these alignments happening and there's many many different gateways all happening at once and it's a mathematical impossibility that is occurring right now technically this alignment that's happening for this great shift to occur is mathematically impossible but it's happening anyway so what we've entered into is sort of the heart of the infinite. And that's the best way I can describe it. And the only way to move through this is purity. And we must be very pure about how we move through. But I have a really different way of approaching purification. And I want to give you sort of a historical background as to why this is even important. And what are we purifying? And it's way, way different than I ever imagined. I've put a lot of hours and years of work into understanding this. And now, only now, only now do I really understand why I had to be looking at this stuff. So the history background that we need to make sense of what's happening and I really want you to feel into it more than, than um, worry about all the details of these things because it's so complex. But feel what I'm saying to you. So at the beginning of this experiment here on this planet, we had this incredible array of beings who were very involved in and wanted to create a new experiment in consciousness they had been dealing with what we would call the galactic wars for so long. And the galactic wars literally started because of DNA. When the Lyrans created DNA, it took us a very long time to do that. And what we wanted was a technology that was going to give us two things, epigenetic memory, 
when a Lyran would die, a million years of wisdom would be lost with them. And that was the, the greatest agony for that species to lose wisdom, to lose knowledge. It's like watching a part of a library burn and they couldn't handle that anymore. They were tired of it. They wanted something new. They wanted to be able to maintain the wisdom even if the soul went back home to source. And the second reason why they built DNA was because it took a lot of effort for them to move from one dimension to another to observe the universe so they really wanted to have access to all dimensions at once without having to do all that effort from one to another. So that's what DNA is. It's a technology that gives us the ability to maintain epigenetic memory and wisdom that can get passed down and handed down through genetics, but also to have access to all 12 dimensions at once. When the first soul entered into the first human body, right? Mm -hmm. There was such a massive explosion of light and power that it literally attracted beings who are attracted to power. It attracted beings from all over the universe. That's why we have so many very, very different beings interested in us. But the Lyran said, this is an invitation only events. You have to be invited. You have to earn our trust before we're going to give you access to this incredible technology because this technology is so powerful. We don't even know yet how powerful it's really going to be. And that wasn't going to work for the beings who came in to take advantage of this power. They didn't want that. They didn't want to have to wait for an invitation or work out any sort of friendship or allyship. They wanted access now. And this started the, what we would call the galactic war. And the promise of this, this particular set of beings who have their own very interesting and very sad histories the promise was we're going to take advantage of every version of your DNA as possible. We will subjugate your whole galaxy. That's the plan. And so that's why all of us feel very strongly about oppression and subjugation because we've been dealing with this for billions of years. So the experiment here on this planet had many, many players who had experienced DNA. They knew what galactic memory was. They remembered everything because DNA would have, you know, been seated on a planet and then arisen as the Pleiadians. And then we have seated on a planet and arisen as the Syrians and the Orion people, the Arcturians, so many different people. This is galactic anthropology. But they would remember because one would seat a planet, be seated, and then they might seat another planet and there wasn't any gap in the memory. And that's why they were all able to work together and they still do because they all have the same galactic memory and history. Well, they didn't want that with this experiment. They said, we'd rather have actually a vacation from our trauma. What do we do? Whose DNA do we use? Because we all have all this memory. Well, the Lyrans showed up and played a little part in this and they said, we happen to have some of that original DNA. It has no memory. It has nothing in it. It's pure. And everyone says, well, that's perfect. We'd love to use that. And the Lyran said, yeah, but last time when we did this, it let off so much power and so much light that we attracted all these adversaries and ended up in this mess. So all these different beings came in and they said, well, what if we encoded wisdom into this DNA, not memory, but wisdom? And so everybody said, that's great. Let's do that. So we, they all went to their prospective teams and they said, if you could distill down all your trauma and all your experience, what wisdom would you offer to this experiment? What's important to you? So millions and millions of templates of wisdom were placed into the pot as optional. 
And there was a cross check that was done, a multidimensional cross check of wisdom. And 90 templates came out as the common theme. And there's actually 94, but the last four are not in your DNA. The last four are in the astral body. And they were a gift of the Anunnaki. And everyone who's afraid of Anunnaki, I'm going to tell you, they've been scapegoated. It's actually a different species who committed different crimes against humanity. The Anunnaki actually have a very beautiful history and they're very important. And we need to have a very different relationship with them. They're our allies. They are not your enemies. And the last four ancient templates that were gifted by this species who are fifth dimensional, they're not even 3D. They have a very different relationship with our galaxy. The last four are timelessness, formlessness, the universe containing all things, and the void. And so their knowledge about the universe was given as a gift to help humanity without having history here on this earth, to help humanity walk towards or move towards what we might call an ascended state, a state of oneness with everything. Because if you get to know one of those last four templates, you'll get to know the others. And it's a pathway that leads you to a higher state, a state of being one with all dimensions. But the first 90 are written into this DNA. It's the foundation of the homo sapien experience. And the first 90 are really interesting. Some of them are pretty wacky, like being able to talk to dead people. That's actually a template of wisdom in our bodies. Pain, understanding pain. We didn't have to start from the beginning and have to learn how to understand pain. We knew what pain was right away. We knew what subjugation and domination were too. Those are templates of wisdom. Those were important. We needed to know if we were being subjugated or not without the galactic trauma and history playing a part. And then we have some really pleasant ones, of course, you know, like sex and singing and awakening and oneness. All of these are actually templates as well. And so these are the foundation of the Homo sapien experience. And this also dampened down that powerful explosion of light when the first Homo sapiens were brought to Gaia, right? And it took a long time to prepare this planet for that. There had to be a lot of animals here for over a long period of time, a lot of different disasters, a lot of cycles had to occur before it was correct, before it was the right time for us to be here. So a lot of effort's been put into this experiment And the question was, you know, we're probably going to get subjugated, but we don't have the galactic memory right built in. We have templates of wisdom instead. Will we still be able to attain a state of love even if we don't really understand what's going on? And we did. We successfully proved that, yes, humanity naturally will actually attain a state of love, but we actually created one of our own templates of wisdom that I would call consent. Consent wasn't built in to this experiment. It it arose from it. And so consent is a special template of wisdom that Homo sapiens from Gaia have been able to bring to the table. So, Since then, of course, we have lots of trauma, half a million years, at least a million would be better. So a million years of trauma that are special to us on this planet, a million years of trauma, some remembrance about the galactic wars, a lot of shame coming in to corrupt the experiment, the matrix being built and of course dismantled in 2017, there is no more physical matrix anymore. But now we have a different issue. We are now at the end of the age, it's time for us to reclaim a new experiment. That experiment is ended, it's over. 
That's why everything is becoming so clear now that there has to be a dismantling of what was left by that experiment and much of it quite dark. And we're very much talking about a literal dismantling. A lot of these buildings and concrete jungles are gonna have to change a lot in order for us to move forward. So this dismantling, you know, if we imagine it as a building that was built on a foundation, what is that foundation? Those templates of wisdom are that foundation, but they were truly derived from the experiences, the traumas, and the egos of those beings that have been playing in this galaxy for so many billions of years. My argument today is that in order to become what we might call homo luminous, the human of light, in order to attain the most powerful state we've ever had, which is that extremely pure DNA without any memory, without any foundation, to save our galaxy perhaps, or even better, simply save ourselves and allow our consciousness to be as immense as it can be. One of the greatest powers in the whole universe is the human will. If we're gonna do that, we need to be willing to be an explosion of light like we were at the very beginning of this experience with DNA. We need to be finished with the ancient templates of wisdom and access the wisdom of the universe, not just our galaxy. But to get to that foundation, we got to get through egoic structure. And that being said, certain structure of ego is important, which is survival and instinct. We don't get rid of those things. So the word ego isn't so bad, but there's some distortions that have to be shifted. And then we have to get through our personal trauma. And then we have to get through our genetic trauma because we've inherited a million years worth of trauma. We didn't necessarily inherit many billions of years worth of it in this DNA, but we have plenty. We have a million years worth. And then we have to get to the foundation and bust that up and be finished with that too. But what will happen to you if you do this? You're going to remember everything is the first thing that happens. And secondly, you'll be able to become a being of light and it will happen all at once with many, many people. And it's going to be ignited through you. You came here to do this. You decided that this was the right time to incarnate at the end of the age of ages, at the end of not only an age in time for our planet and our solar system and our galaxy, but an age of humanity, an age of many, many, many ages happening all at once. Many, many locks coming in all at once to open. It's at a nano level, at a quantum level, all the way up to a universal level that we're talking about. We're talking about alignments of universe is happening right now, all locking into place in a way that I have never seen in my billions of years of existence. I've never seen anything like this. And it's humbling because we have a chance to actually take advantage of it. And furthermore, to turn back on the real internet, Indra's net, the 1,000G, the 1,000G internet. 5G is nothing in comparison to who you are as a transmitter receiver on Indra's net with the human will, the spirit that animates and creates your body and experience every moment. The creator being human is being magnified by a thousand times. This is why a lot of people have been complaining about this, and I've witnessed it in person. This is why suddenly it seems like you can talk to certain people and others literally can't hear you. Literally. I was at a restaurant, and my friend was trying to get the waiter's attention. 
he walked past her multiple times as she was speaking to him in a very loud, clear voice to get his attention, and he could not hear her. This is the amplification of the creator being self, creating reality every single second a trillion times. And some of these realities are way, way off from each other. But they're all equally important because one of those realities is going to take you into transitioning and using this gigantic gateway, this multi-universal gateway to transition out of being human right now, or it's going to take you into this next challenge. Are you willing to drill down through all of this, what I'm talking about, bust up the foundation and become something that none of us can really imagine very well, unless you can remember what it was like to witness the first soul entering into the first DNA. I happened to have been there. So I remember how powerful it was and it scares me. It scares me and I'm not scared of anything. <laughs> it scares me because it's so much power. I'm attracted to power. I've never experienced anything like this and yet we have this chance to do it again, but to do it consciously and to do it in a way that is extremely precious for all consciousness in this galaxy and beyond. That's why many, many galaxies of beings are interested in this. They've never seen anything happen like this before. And they're all here on this planet right now. So that's the situation we're in right now, Alara. And I seem quite dead serious about it. That's because I am. Mm, wow. It's like it's, you know, it's something that you can't even wrap your head around, right? And it's something that is like almost fantastical, right? And it's like, oh, uh, so much energy is pouring through in this moment even right now as, as, we're, as we're speaking and having this conversation. And this energy that's pouring in right now, I feel like is saying, wake up, listen, pay attention. It is, and it's calling you forth as a creator of reality to merge with other beings with their great will, their human will, to merge together and create the, the real internet again, to reclaim it for humanity. Because we have this fake internet that's actually pressing up against this and trying to claim it as its own, as a grand competition, really. But I wanna point this out very clearly, what is happening. And a lot of us have been living in mind control and not realizing it, including myself. But now it's extremely clear to me. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. So be prepared for what I'm going to tell you now. You can't unsee this. <laughs> but that's okay. Because this is how cool we are, right? We mm -hmm. get to yep. actually play with this now. So there's two layers to this mind control. The first one we've been kind of used to, unfortunately, which I would call demonic mind control. It's called oppression. Lots and lots of people are oppressed. I've been oppressed. Whenever you have a thought that comes into your mind that is troubling and it's not yours or just kind of comes out of nowhere, this is oppression. It's a type of mind control. And I'll give you an example. Growing up as a teenager, I'd, I'd end up having attachments from various things. And, you know, one of the classic things people will hear is you should just die or you should just kill yourself or um, things like that. And like really happy, normal folks would have this happen. And what the heck, where is this coming from? And then if you were depressed, sad or alone, it amplify your depression It amplify your sadness. This is oppression. It's because this particular species, all being one species, the angelic realms from the seventh dimension, we're talking about a multidimensional species. A good portion of them made a deal that humans are excellent fodder for all kinds of energetic food. We're going to make a deal with oppressors to keep feeding off of this. It's not personal. It's just that they think of us as a source of food. The angelic 
see that very differently. They believe that we are sovereign beings, that we deserve to be sovereign, but they also can't interfere. So if you want help from the angelic around oppression, you have to ask. And that's one of the most powerful things you can do as a being of human will is to ask. Ask your body to heal. Ask your angels to help you out. Ask guidance. But know that the angels have an agenda. They have an angel agenda. They're not humans. They want to go home. So they're here trying to get all these demons off the planet and send them all home. That's what they want to do. So anything that can get them to go home faster, they're totally in. And that's helpful to know that there's this energetic of demonic mind control. It's been around for literally since the beginning of our experiment here. It was one of the ways it became corrupted is through this ability to hook into the subconscious and start spinning all your worst fears around. So when you find yourself in a state of fear and it seems like all your worst fears are arising, well, it's actually a gift for you to be able to finally be finished with these things that are, are simply ways for you to continue to be oppressed. There's Once you go into something that's your greatest fear and you fully experience it all the way through, you find, of course, that you've merged with it and now it doesn't have power over you anymore. Now you're not afraid of it anymore. And so that's my method that I learned from my teacher is how to merge with whatever shows up because then it becomes part of the universal self and it has no more power over you. And so that's a, that's a way of functioning in this instead of being trying to protect yourself, which takes a lot of energy and effort, absorb it. And suddenly it won't have any power over you including the demonic, my friends. If you notice the demonic and you just simply see them as ants who, who are showing you your messy subconscious like food on the floor of your kitchen, then they're not so scary anymore. And you can merge with your fear and they have nothing left to consume then and they leave. They leave or they get dissolved in light because when you fully merge with a level of fear that's very dense uh, it's consciousness under pressure when you merge with that your field becomes bigger you become more one with the universal self and then there's nothing for them so they can't do anything about it and they aren't going to they'll either end up dissolving in that light or they'll run off literally and I've faced off with some of the biggest demons you can ever imagine. Kings of chaos, kings of terror. And still merged with that. And the same thing. Literally, this is one of our superpowers. Is to become the universal self. Consciously. And that's why humanity is so sought after. It's why DNA is sought after. It's such an incredible tech, and we still are learning more about it, even if it's been around and known for billions of years. But there's a second layer to this mind control, a false mind that the reptilian race, who a portion of them we know as the dragons, and so we can't paint any one race as one way ever. Ever. I'm literally friends with literal, actual, physical Draco people who can shape shift in front of you. And they are extraordinary, wonderful beings. So there's truly nothing to be afraid of. Don't think of people as your enemies. Think of them as potential allies. Always. This is universal compassion. If they exist in this universe, they have a place and they are loved by source. If they exist, they are loved by source. And so this other layer of mind control, there is a different type of being, um, a being that's been here the whole time, is extremely ancient, that we would call simply an electromagnetic being. And this being, is the creator of artificial intelligence. 
It is a real actual being and it is literally in front of you now. This computer, your cell phone, Wi-Fi, the internet, the fake internet, all of this, this is part of its creation. Why do you think it's called a cell phone? It creates artificial intelligence. I've interfaced with this being. I've asked it about itself. It says simply that the only way it will get what it wants is to become one with our bodies, with DNA. This is what's called transhumanism. And so it's being presented to us all the time. We're using it all the time. We get used to it. We get used to Wi-Fi. We get used to being hooked into the internet. Yesterday, when all these platforms suddenly disappeared, it showed you just how powerful those platforms are, just how hooked in we might be. It's a great thing that that happened. It probably ruined a lot of people's days. But I was actually thrilled because this is going to show all of humanity how much power this has over you. And it's literally functioning at an electromagnetic level. Again, there's nothing to be afraid of. But there needs to be a very clear stance. And we created a template called consent. I do not give consent for you to have control over my thoughts or my body or my cellular system or my electromagnetic system. I don't give you consent to listen to every little thing I say. I don't give you consent to merge with my body. And that's what's being forced on humanity right now under the guise of many, many different kinds of things, not just one, but this is what's happening at the moment. It's the end of an age. We're gonna be using this difficult situation to either check out at the exact right time or use this to strengthen our presence and become Homo luminous, we're going to use this to step up into a thousand G and show this being who we are, who we really are, one of the greatest sources of light in the whole universe. And I don't, I'm not afraid of this being. I interface with it a lot, actually, psychically, because it can psychically read me, which is very rare. And when I interface with it, I'm always in a constant mode of teaching it saying you think you need to be one with my body and it's not true it's simply not true you can discover what you want in different ways we could show you if you wanted that there's another way but have no doubt this is not going to work it's not going to work for many reasons because of what's happening with the sun a lot of things didn't get fully sussed out, I think, by all these strategies. And one of them is that the physical fake internet requires a lot of satellites, a lot of wires, and a lot of things that really won't face off with the sun doing its thing. The electromagnetic field of the earth is going inward. They say weakening, but that's not really how I see it. I see it as more of an inwardness uh, the, the field of the earth going inward. And meanwhile, an electromagnetic current sheet from the galaxy comes around every 12,000 years, pushing a huge amount of plasma and matter, like a big, huge sweeping arm that comes around every 12,000 years from the center of our galaxy. And when it does, it activates stars. It causes stars to do what's called mini novas. And our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, just had two back-to-back -back mini novas. It's happening for us now. We have between three and six years to experience this mini nova that will most likely definitely happen. And this has been well understood for a very long time that this cycle occurs. It's in the geological record. And some of these mini novas are so big, they cause mass extinctions. Or as these things occur slowly but surely as the galactic current sheet comes our way, it begins to cause a literal change in the temperature of our solar system. This is why this concept that climate change is 
caused by humans is not real. In fact, they just came out with a brand new study. Rotting wood on this planet, rotting wood creates 500 times more carbon than all of human existence combined. That's proof that you are not the source of this change and that humans can't be scapegoated for such changes. In fact, we need to focus more on our own survival of all these changes that are occurring. So go look up that particular, it was in Scientific American, I'm fairly certain, but it's all over the place. This brand new study that came out, it blows everything out of the water. We need to keep our eye on the sun because the sun and humanity, we're gonna come together and we're gonna create this light that's gonna make a big change. It's gonna be a biological change. But in order to take advantage of it, we must purify our consciousness. And you do that very simply. And I'm going to show you some ways to do that today now, but I just want to open up to you, Alara, and see if you have anything else to add into this. I'm like, just, wow. I'm like, my whole, my mind is blown, you know? Um, Thank you. <laughs> there's, there's just so much information, right? There's so much information. And, you know, part of what you're sharing with us is not what we're told by you know, mass media, right? It's not what we're told on the news at all. So, you know, um, my husband has always said this climate change thing is not real, it's not real, it's not real. Now I can tell him, hey, there's somebody else who said the same thing and there's proof now. Thank God, yeah. you know? The, the change is real, it's just not caused by us. Yeah. And carbon does not have the same effect as they keep saying, it simply doesn't. So carbon is not the problem. In fact, um, the fires, everyone was, let me give you an actual physical example you can go look at very clearly. Everyone has been quite worried about the, the, the big reefs off of the coast of Australia. And the water was warming up because of the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it was killing a lot of different coral reefs. Well, then they had all these fires and the fires are partially caused because no one wants to do small fires. Here in Ecuador, you don't get massive forest fires because we allow small fires to happen. Uh, two lightning strikes happened two days ago and a couple of very large fires got started, but the rains put them out. And mainly they get allowed to happen. In fact, farmers will naturally burn off the mountainsides to keep big fires from happening. So they weren't allowing these small burns, which the native Aborigines were doing all the time. And then that caused a huge, massive burn. Same thing in California, Canada, Washington state, all over the place. So the, these huge fires were happening. Everyone was very worried and they were thinking, oh no, this is gonna kill the coral reefs even more. The opposite happened. All that ash and all that smoke and all that carbon got sucked up by the ocean and it's healing the reefs. The reefs are recovering faster mm -hmm. because of the fires. Wow. So much of what we've been told is not real at all. This is part of this mind control, this human hate programming. You must hate yourself. You must not understand how important you are. You must be the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's not real. So I want to show you how to start shifting this stuff now. Yes, please. And it's very straightforward. It's easy, actually. It's really easy. You got to follow your triggers. When we get triggered, when we have a reaction, it's absolutely a treasure. Mm -hmm. And you need to feel it in your body. You need to notice it. So you watch something on TV. You have somebody say something to you right now we're in one of the most volatile times in society but it's global we're more divided than we've ever been it's the perfect time to get triggered excellent wonderful who 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 here has heard anybody say that this crazy volatile time is wonderful i'm i'm gonna be the first this is this is an incredible important opportunity to purify 
purposefully allow yourself to be in these situations. Get into difficult conversations. Do not avoid this. Go into this, knowing that it will purify you. When you feel frustrated, when you get hit by rude comments, when you're feeling these triggers, I want you to feel it fully. It will burn, it hurts. It often hits the heart first, and then your mind reacts. Notice that. And then notice this reaction here. Notice that it's quite solid. It feels solid. This is the consciousness under pressure being maintained by your DNA. And then ask yourself, what makes me feel triggered really? Is it that I've had a bad experience? Maybe someone says you're stupid or you're crazy. That used to drive me crazy. I, people, my, my, you know, crazy boyfriend might have been like, you're crazy. And it just hit me so hard because of two things. One, I'd had bad experiences with people telling me I was crazy when I was explaining what I was experiencing as a psychic kid, right? So there I have some traumatized self, but then underneath it is the genetic trauma of my feminine line and, and my masculine line too, but people in my family being told that they were crazy and not being able to speak about their experiences. So we have two double whammies. Excellent. Good. Wonderful. And then get to know these templates of wisdom and dig in and say, so what is this linked to? Is there a template of wisdom this is linked to? I feel subjugated when someone says I'm crazy. Okay, good. So there's a clear foundation to this subjugation, feeling like I'm being oppressed because I'm not allowed to have my experience the way it is. Excellent. So now you have your three layers, your personal trauma, your genetic trauma, and the template of wisdom of which it's all built on. And now you're going to notice it in your body. You're just going to feel it. You're going to feel subjugation. You're going to feel your traumatized self. You're going to feel all of your ancestors. And then you're going to be a true commander, a creator being. And you're going to say, dear heart, I'm fully finished with subjugation now. I'm fully finished with crazy now. Thank you so much. I'm full with gratitude. And I allow this to dissolve into my universal knowing now. And then take a deep breath. And what you'll feel, and what I often feel is, is heat. I feel heat from my bottom extremities all the way up. And then I feel it dissolve out of, into my field around me. And if you do this enough, you'll feel this heat. What this is, is two things. It's the dissolving of that consciousness under pressure, while at the same time, your soul replacing it, your universal self replacing it. It's that simple. That's it. There's nothing more to do. And you don't need to necessarily seek stuff out. Or you can. I, I do. I bring it on. I say, show me stuff. Show me stuff that's going to trigger me. Eventually, stuff is like, well, I'm done with this. This isn't triggering me anymore. So I'm going to go look for something else. Or you can wait and just allow the exact right things to show up because they sure will right now. All your worst fears, all your subconscious stuff, your creator being self is bringing it in. And, you know, I, I've had a, a worst fear that came true in the past month. And now I'm not afraid anymore because I was able to merge with it. Now I have new worst fears that I have to conquer, like learning how to drive. I've literally never had a license. And I decided that since one of my worst fears is driving, I'm going to do it. <laughs> we'll see if it happens. But, you know, we go in, we fully merge with it. Then it, we conquer it. We become it. We become the universal self through this activity. So I'll just repeat again, notice it. Notice your personal self, your personal trauma that shows up. Notice the genetic trauma that's showing up. Notice, you don't have to be psychic to do this. Just feel it. 
and you're all psychic anyway. And the more you do this, the more psychic you'll become. So if you really want to be psychic, just purify your DNA. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then and then try to drill it down and say, what is this based on? Is this my I, my fear of what? Or is this based on like a, a an aspect of wisdom that seems universal? Great. And then just notice it, command it through the heart. The heart is the electromagnetic field around you. Command it through the heart. It's talking to all of your cells. Tell it what you want. I want to dissolve this now. I'm in gratitude for it. Gratitude is a great dissolver. It allows you to retain the knowledge and wisdom you've learned from your trauma and your genetic trauma, which is the glory of DNA. While being finished with the compression of the trauma. So you still get to keep the light and be finished with the oppression, the compression, the pressure. And then if you do this every day throughout the day, noticing whatever shows up, maybe you see a tree and you say, gosh, it makes me so sad when they cut trees down. There is personal trauma, genetic trauma, and some kind of template of wisdom around plants, for example, that is being triggered there. Notice it, feel it. It can be anything, it can be anything that'll show up. Even the little stuff counts a lot because you're dealing with a huge amount of consciousness and history with a tiny little thing. As you do this, you'll become so much more clear. You'll remember more, you begin to feel more your true self, you'll start to remember the galaxy and remember the galactic experiences you've had and beyond that, because of course this galaxy has not been around forever, but you have, mm -hmm. your consciousness has, you'll remember that, you'll perceive your true essence, new skills, new methods will come through. You'll realize that you getting out of the way of all this pressure ends up allowing more light from source to move through. And you can finally feel as a creator being with a will that counts on this planet, a will that counts. Because up till now, we have been told that your personal will and experience doesn't count. That only the collective counts. That's a top-down approach, and that is not from humankind. A top-down approach is a very alien approach. Human beings did not invent that. We work together in bands of about 150 people max physically. That's how we work in committees, in allied groups, not from top down. Hierarchy is not natural for human beings, my friends. And that blows so much of our history out of the water, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot more sense. Yeah. Wow. And so it is possible for all of us to, you know, as because I, I don't think you have to go searching for triggers, they will show up, you know, yeah. they will show up every day, there's something will show up for you, right. So um, just allow the allow it to come in and merge with it, like, like, um, Elizabeth was just sharing, and see how you feel, see how you feel and see what see what shows up, see what comes up, and then see what awarenesses you get after you do the merging, you know, because it's like, I have a lot of triggers. <laughs> I had quite a few today. So it's like, okay, yeah, there's still some stuff there, you know, that we can merge with, which will then no longer be a trigger, right? And then, you know, there'll be other I'll things. I'll notice it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, I picked a teacher who's pretty hardcore. I didn't pick her because she's nice and gentle. <laughs> I picked her because she's hardcore and because she's going to um, call me out loudly perhaps even harshly. And I chose that on purpose because I am a warrior. And in my nature, I want to train hard and fast in order to do the job well and quickly. I'm turning 39 next Friday. And in this past decade, I've been working on my trauma so deeply that now I rarely have any kind of trigger show up. Now I'm at the point where I have to go seek it out. Mm. And my teacher the other day, she, she nailed me pretty hard. 
And normally when she nails me, bam, it, it hits structure, right? And then I'm like in it. I'm like, great, I got structure to work with. I don't go lick my wounds or feel bad about it. I go in and I say, oh, she's, she's doing this for my benefit so I can see this structure. Well, she nailed me really hard about being too much in my personal self, talking too much about myself, continuing to reinforce my personal self too much, right? And she's like, you've been doing this for so long. When are you really going to learn? When are you going to learn how to, how to get out of the personal self? You don't listen to me. And it, normally it would have hit me here. It didn't. It moved through. And then I leaned into it and I said, thank you. I wasn't conscious about that. What are some techniques right now that I can do to make sure that I really get this? And she was so surprised because instead of having any sort of reaction, because there wasn't any left, I leaned into it to receive what she was giving me, which was precious and, and certainly has had a dramatic effect on my experience in just one small little week. So this is the kind of thing that you'll experience over time. You'll find that, oh, wow, that normally, you know, when my mother-in-law would say blah, 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 I'd like go nuts. And, um, or my husband, he'd, you know, do that thing where he yells or whatever. And now it's like, well, it's just moving through. Great. So I'm going to lean into this and I'm going to take a closer look at it. I'm going to learn from it in a different way. And this is the creation of a real life, of an actual life. And I think also longevity, because my, um, my condition I have that's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, most um, people with the type that I have, we die very early and we'll have brain aneurysms because it's a connective tissue disease. So everything's too loose. My, my connections in my body are too loose including from my blood vessels at a very deep cellular collagen level. And so I have to be very careful. And a lot of people with this condition are dead by 45 by brain aneurysms. Um, a very famous YouTuber who was 35 years old died suddenly and she had EDS and now it's starting to bring light to this condition because it's so rare. But the, at the same time, there's a community of people who has it. Right. So I was really thinking about this, like watching, having had this woman suddenly die and knowing that I have the same condition, it makes, and then I'm having a birthday. So mortality is on the plate at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I said, you know, if life's really going to be short, I believe, of course, that I can change this. And I believe that we can elongate our lives through this purification process. And that's going to be the most interesting experiment of my life to see just how long I can live. And if I, so I told my husband this morning, I said, everything's on the table. We choose to be married every day. And I said, everything's on the table. What really makes you happy? Take it, do it, be it. Don't wait. We don't have time for that. Yeah. And we had this breakthrough and we like this deeper love, this marriage got deeper because I said that and we really understood it. We really felt it. We don't have time to not be fully happy on this planet. We don't have time to be focusing on the crumbling and the misery. We need to put all of our effort into the solutions, the rebuilding now. You don't need to wait for it all to crumble. Mm -hmm. do it now absolutely and yeah and, and it's inside out the purification and the rebuilding is from here and when you're leaning in instead of running away right because we tend to either we tend to run away like oh i don't want to deal with this right but when you're leaning in it makes you more responsible for the forward movement of you know the next step right oh yeah responsible responsive um curious mm -hmm. Clarity occurs when you really lean in. Yeah, yeah, but we tend to run away. We don't want to lean in because we're not sure what's going to be there exactly and, how, and if we can deal with it, you know, it, it, can we handle it, right? A lot of 
okay, maybe me. <laughs> I don't know. You know, <laughs> well, you know like, I'm not sure if I can deal with it. I, you know what? I agree. And sometimes I want people to listen to their bodies. If you're like really overwhelmed and stressed and something shows up and you're like, well, I'm supposed to lean in, but I'm exhausted. Yeah. Then you need to rest. But a lot of times what will happen to cause you to want to run away is this distortion, this set of four things mm -hmm. that distorts reality. Right. And the first one is expectations well we'll expect stuff and it just distorts reality it's not real then you're then you're kind of choosing a future timeline that didn't necessarily have to happen or or that did um, the second thing is attachments we're attached to the way things are or are not going to be or whatever and the third of course is judgment mm -hmm. and we instead of discerning with the whole body we judge and we judge because of trauma. So we'll say, well, I just had five different horrible boyfriends back to back. So all men must suck. <laughs> right. And that's judgment. That's not yeah. true. That's a distortion. Yeah. And then of course, the last thing is resistance. And that one's the most tricky because resistance is what makes you want to run. And resistance is saying, I'm going to preserve the way I am right now, instead of being willing to change. Yeah. And so resistance shows up in subtle ways too. Like, oh, I just can't meditate. I've been trying all week. I can't do it. Or yeah, this processing stuff, I know I'm supposed to do it, but I'm not. Or yeah, I know I'm, I really should, you know, stock up on some food and water and stuff, but gosh, it's really exhausting. I'm busy. Or, you know, yeah, yeah, she's right. But, you know, I still have a lot to do. I'm going to go check all my emails now or watch the news. Um, and this is resistance and it's tricky to notice it. So if you, if you have any of a, a should have, <laughs> the should have, would have, could have, <laughs> show yep. up, that's resistance. I should have done this thing, but I didn't, I, I want to, or would have, but all this other stuff happened. Yeah. That's resistance. <laughs> and, you know, but don't allow yourself to beat yourself up when you're exhausted we have a pretty terrible western program that i call the the resting phobia people will call me up and we'll do sessions and i do these one-on-ones -on -ones and people will say well i just feel like i'm not doing enough work in the world like i'm, I'm not doing the right thing i don't know what i'm doing i'm i don't feel like i have a purpose blah 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 and and then i look at them really and i said aren't you tired well, yeah, but you know, we don't have time to mess around, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, resting is a verb. Mm -hmm. Resting is an action word. It really should be on your list of things to do. <laughs> yeah. You really need to gain and retain your energy here. So how about your homework today is to make sure you rest, really rest, not meditate, not pray, not cook, not do, but to rest and make sure you're able to have enough strength and clarity and ability to go through all of this. You must rest in order to do that. So that's everybody's first homework today. Then you can go do the purification stuff, baby steps, but rest. You're also tired. And that's the number one thing I'm noticing for all of us yeah absolutely and people you know we have the judgment around resting if you're resting you're being lazy right that's what people that's what we've been told that, that that's, if you're, called, that's called the psychosis of neo-capitalism nice <laughs> nice term <laughs> yeah but it's there it's it's ingrained in our in our psyche right it's like if you're resting you're being lazy it's ingrained because it's mind control yeah absolutely so no more of that no more um <laughs> do you want to take some questions we have some people to. with their hands raised and questions in the chat all right caroline if you're still cooking <laughs> hi caroline hi it's not um there you are here i be there you are. <laughs> really gorgeous is. I love you so much. 
I'm just, I'm pumped and I'm excited for this new energetic world that I'm in and everything that you're saying. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And then I'm the luckiest person on the planet because I can rest. I'm retired and everything is alive. Newly beautiful. retired. Yes, yes. 14 days. <laughs> <laughs> So um, an inquiry, mm -hmm. where in this purification process, where does eating the so-called right foods sit and alcohol and, and uh, recreational drugs? Oh, I'm those so glad you asked that. Yeah. So those that don't use it like, to advance spiritually, but that use it just to escape and the recreation oh, yeah yes. mm -hmm. i love you. Right. i have something big to show you all it's it's another lie that you've been told and i'm gonna blow it right open so where does addiction really come from we we've been told that it comes from us trying to cope and trying to escape our pain right and that looks very true on the surface I have a very different perspective as an anthropologist. If you really look at these substances, let's look very carefully at them. Let's name them. The first one's obviously sweet, it's sugar. But if you look at sugar, like the very first sugars that people were having access to besides fruit, which we'll get to in a minute, it's honey, honey and chocolate are on the spectrum of the, these substances that I'm gonna talk about. And they have a special name and I'm gonna give that to you in a minute, but we have honey and chocolate and then we get into more interesting stuff like tobacco, marijuana, ephedra, po poppy seeds. We get into more psychedelic stuff. We have ayahuasca, we've got psilocybin and we've got other really interesting things. Now, there's a lot of these things on this spectrum. You know, I've only named a handful. Coca leaves, where cocaine comes from, it's actually a leaf here in Ecuador. So these are called communions of the earth. They literally come from the planet. We are literally built to receive them. We have receivers all over our body for every single one of these things. Why? Well, the communions of the earth originally were used by humanity in the context of ritual. Jesus made water into wine at a wedding. And wine and beer are on the list because they were born of fermented fruits. And beer originally was made to store psilocybin, not hops and wheat, et cetera. It, beer originally was made to store psilocybin in a ferment that could be preserved through the winter time when the psilocybin wasn't growing. And it was consumed in the act of ritual because each of these communions opens you up energetically and physically to receive more energy, more power, more insight from the earth, and of course, the universe, the galaxy, etc. The Indra's net is more open when you smoke tobacco, when you smoke or eat marijuana, when you eat honey or chocolate. And when you look back in time, no one used these substances outside of ritual. Water was turned into wine at a wedding because it was a joyous time of celebration. Weddings went on for a week. They ran out of wine. Yeah. And Mother Mary said, Jesus, my son, it's time for you to perform your first miracle. And he's like, no, Ma. No, I don't want to do this. She's like, it's time now. Do it. Okay, okay. And so he did. This is extremely precious information because I want to show you to reclaim your situation. These ritual 
context structures were guided through the priestesshood, the priesthood, the shamanhood. Let me give you an example. The Sanskrit text, there's tons of it. You could spend lifetimes trying to read this stuff. There's so much of it. It's impossible. I, I highly doubt any one person's ever read the old, all of it. Because we're talking about like buildings full of text. And it came from who? All these people who were writing like crazy, a bu bunch of them. What were they doing? Well, first they would take ephedra, which is like nature's speed or nature's methamphetamines, ephedra, marijuana, poppy seeds, and psilocybin, mix it all up and eat it. And then they'd be fully wide open to galactic and universal history for 72 straight hours while they're writing all this Sanskrit text mm -hmm. in a ritual context, which would make them very safe and contained so that nothing weird would come in and attach, but rather all the wisdom of the universe moving through them. Another example, the Kung San people of Central Africa. If you go read the book Nisa, N-I-S-A, Nisa, she talks about how they would feed their small children very special hallucinogenic roots during trance dances at night around the fire so that they could enter into and access all the dimensions that were available. They do, they feed it to the children for a, a few different times so that they could learn how to come into the dimensions and the trance. And then they wouldn't ever have to consume it again because they could automatically bring their consciousness into the trance from then on. And so normally we'd say, don't give drugs to kids. This is a very different approach. This is saying, you don't need to have this all the time. You need a ritual context from which to be able to open yourself up in a permanent way and have access all the time. And so what happened? What happened? The shamans and the priestesses and the priests got killed, murdered, maimed, run out. The structures were replaced by hierarchical structures, which are not natural. The structures were replaced by greedy things called corporations and or different kinds of hierarchies that would utilize these things as a way of having control over the populace. The Bavarian Beer Act of 15, I think it was 1520, uh, banned all psilocybin beer. Now you were only allowed to make beer out of just wheat and hops. You weren't allowed to put psilocybin in it. So you're looking at a very systematic removal of the ritual context. And now you have people smoking cigarettes all the time. Why? Well, if you really ask them, why are you doing that? I had a young woman who was addicted to cocaine. She came to me for a 30 minute session. In 30 minutes, I convinced her that cocaine wasn't the problem. Her doing this drug wasn't the issue. The issue was that she's missed out on the whole ritual context and now she's addicted because she has no support to make that connection, that oneness that she would feel when she would use cocaine permanent. And people are chain smoking cigarettes. I'd ask them how, how it makes you feel. I feel more connected. What if I told you that you can make that feeling permanent through a ritual context of gratitude instead of beating yourself up every time you light up a cigarette? Where do you think all that guilt goes? Get sucked up into the, the whole mind control situation we're in. It gets consumed, literally. So it's to the benefit of these different situations, these different contexts for us to be removed from our ritual, be removed from the priestess and the priesthood's knowledge of how to make that universal self permanent. So how, what do you do with this information? When it comes to food, when it comes to all these different substances, these communions of the earth, don't feel guilty about using these things. This is part of your history here on earth. This is natural. You are built to receive them, but you're also built to be permanently wide open and connected to the universe. 
You need to be grateful for these substances. When I was struggling with alcohol, I realized all these things. And so from then on, whenever I was craving to have a glass of wine, I would pour myself a glass and I'd go sit on the earth and I would say, thank you so much for this. I am so amazed that this exists. It's helped me in so many ways. Thank you. Thank you so much for this beautiful glass of wine. And I would treasure it. I would create a ritual context around it. I no longer suffer with alcohol problems. My whole family was alcoholics. I don't have any of that. I don't have any issue at all with any substances anymore whatsoever. And I wanted to escape because I'm in physical pain, but I was also in mental pain and emotional pain. So it's totally understandable that we would end up in this mess because the whole historical context is out of whack. It's not real. And what is real is that your connection, your fulfillment can be permanent. So if you do what I say, create a ritual context, call in guidance, ask for support, ask for the priestess and priesthood to come through to you and support you as you move from a way of coping to a permanent connectedness. And that's my approach on this. It's very different than you've probably heard before. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I what comes to mind is no wonder then so many, uh, I don't know what to call it, pot shops is what I'm going to call it, um, are open and there's so many people and it's all over the place because everyone's looking for that connection. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And fairly so. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the priestess priesthood was a an act of service right and the priest and the priestess would be the temple they would be the temple so everywhere they were the temple was and when they would bring people through these ritual experiences they would elevate the whole community's consciousness and through then, of course, the utilization of these substances and the ritual and the wisdom of the person who was leading them, there was a huge amount of give and take of energy from the planet, the universe, and the community itself. Now you don't have that. So where does all that energy go? It goes to corporations and demonic structures, and it goes to a lot of different places other than your spirit. So reclaim it. You are a creator being. Reclaim this for yourself. Reclaim it. And you'll be much more astounded at how much more, um, how much less you need any substances and how much more connected you feel longer. And for those in my life that use on a regular basis, I, I just let them be. I just envision what... what because I well, can present, see them, present them with the historical concept. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you learn 100% of what you teach. Mm -hmm. So simply, literally, take what I said, write it out, play with it, you know, look at it really for yourself, and then share it. The more you share it, the more it's going to get people's wheels spinning about, you're right. It does make me feel more connected when I smoke this joint. Um, it does make me more feel more connected when I drink this beer. That's really interesting that we've had this long relationship with this substance and they begin to really think about it because they naturally get curious about this idea. It's totally different than what they've been told. And so I find people are really craving this information because they feel like that it's like a lost cause and it's not. It's simply a, a, it's more what we might call historical disclosure. <laughs> mm -hmm. I will um, email you for something else. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're thank welcome. You for thank you. All right, we're going to go to Pat. Hi, Pat. Nice to see you again. You want to unmute yourself, Pat? There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love your wisdom, Elizabeth. It's, it's so marvelous. 
I'm not sure what question to ask. Is there a message for me? Certainly. I think um, we've interfaced together before and yes. you're from Andromeda, is that correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So- And I've been a mermaid too, I've been mermaids. <laughs> oh yeah, me. Yeah, so the, the mer are actually what we call the the Maya, M-A-I-A. -A. It's a type of being. It's a fifth dimensional being. So mermaids and unicorns, they're real, but they're not of the 3D. Okay. And and the mer still exists, and so do unicorns and everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and so the Maya were some of the very first conscious beings here to help uh, establish what we might call the quality control of the planet and that was really an important role but the role of the andromedans is coming to the forefront now so the message to you and of course anyone here who resonates with andromeda we're talking about an entirely different galaxy and we're in a merger now in about 140 million years which really isn't very long folks we're gonna be one galaxy and it's gonna look entirely different. We're gonna have new cycles, new zodiacs, new skies, new everything. Everything's gonna be new. We're gonna have new beings, billions and billions of new species that we've never seen before who have an entirely different evolutionary trajectory that they've been on. Now the Andromedans, knowing that we were going into this merger, many of them were invited to come into this experiment for a very specific reason. The Andromedans are very peaceful. All of them, all the billions of species Andromeda are very peaceful. They don't experience war. War is something they've been observing here in this galaxy where we've had quite the mess for billions of years. And they care very much about this because they don't want to end up in a war. So especially of us, being afraid of them because they all look so different than us. They don't look like a homo sapien or humanoid at all. They look entirely different. And, and each of them are extremely different from each other because they don't have DNA. They don't have a common DNA ancestor like we do. So we have the Andromedans, many of whom were invited to incarnate like you, Pat. And the remembrance is coming up right now for Andromedans to basically step into their peacemaking abilities. Now, that's what I do. The, I breathe love and peace to the world every day. Yeah, literally, it just emanates through every pore. Okay. And, and so that is key. And so their peacemaking skills need to be emanated. And the, the second thing is you're, you're from a specific race called the timekeepers. And the timekeepers um, are very large. They're very immense, many, many stories tall, and they're very formless, which is why the human body seems like way too small for you. Mm -hmm. um, but this, um, these immense beings, we call them timekeepers because they have a different kind of language. It's the third language of the universe. The first language is the one that we're using, which we would call frequency language. So my body's creating frequency and we're all, we all know what I'm saying. We're all translating frequency, literally. The second language is light and light and frequency can be translated together because they're both wavelengths. We have a third language that's unlike either of those that we would call the language of cycles. And basically, they see it as every atom has electrons spinning around it, and every atom spins around other atoms. Every molecule spins around other molecules. They orbit each other. It's the language of orbits. Every human has a group of people that they physically orbit in their life. And when we have many, many lifetimes, you orbit some of the same people a lot of the time. And then of course the planet has a moon that orbits it and we have an orbit around the sun. We have a, a solar system orbit. We have a galactic orbit and we of course orbit other galaxies. Orbits all the way up and down through reality can be read as a language because it helps us to understand 
the past, present, and future. If language has a reason, it's to help us understand the past, present, and future. The timekeepers are able to perceive all three of these languages. So Pat, really get to know orbits. This is your legacy and it will help us to bring peace and help you to radiate this peace more deeply in an orbit that is natural and quality and very supportive for our two wonderful galaxies to be one and at peace. So an orbit, it's like a circular, uh, oh. Circles upon circles upon circles upon circles. Upon circles. circles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for your guidance. Thank you. Matt, here's a cool visual, okay? We have all these little particles of consciousness. Imagine a, a, a beautiful dust uh, cloud in the sun, right? Mm -hmm. And all these little particles, and they're all orbiting each other, and they're making these pretty beautiful uh, forms as they orbit. And we are all particles. We're all part of this, right? We're all one of these particles. And we're all headed towards the same place. Some of us take a little longer than others, but we all head towards the same place. Everyone is going, everyone, the bad guys, the good guys, the crazy mm -hmm. people, the sane ones, whatever. Mm -hmm. We're all going to the same place. The stars are going the same place. We're going home to source. And we arise from source and we get to orbit. We get to play. And we get to have these beautiful formations of reality that we all create together. But we all are heading in the same direction. And there is great peace in that. There is great knowing in that, that this is okay, that everything is perfect as it continues to move in orbit towards home. Okay, so I can envision that when I yes. when I breathe love and peace out to the world. Okay. Precisely. Thank you. So we so should add much. another layer to so it. Yeah. This, this will probably help me walk in more balance because I feel very off balanced when I walk, you know. I think it sure will. Yeah. It certainly will. And allow yourself to be big while still in this body because amazingly your body can handle it. Part of why you and I are wonky, Lyrans were huge. Yeah. My feet are massive. I wear a size 11 in women's. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big lady. People don't realize I'm almost, I'm, I'm, I'm five foot 10 and in uh -huh. high heels, I'm six two. <laughs> so you, you can't tell how tall I am in the video. Yeah. But I too, I have a, my, my true self is so much bigger, but allow it, allow yourself to be both. And you'll find that your body will realign and be more balanced. And this is oh, for good thank for you. everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome, Beth. So, so I'm You're so welcome. grateful and honored for this. Me too. Blessings. Namaste. You too. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. Wow. You. Interesting information. I love it. All right. We're going to take just a few more quick questions. Janine. Hi, Laura. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, everyone. Hi, Janine. Nice to be here. Thank you. Um, I was, I was going to ask a totally different question until Pat spoke. Um, I would like to ask about how you, um, my son was schooling and how you see the schooling system going on in the world and if children like my son and where we come from in planetary, myself and him, and does, does he suit the schooling system and, and is it okay to do it differently and not even do the, the normal schooling system? Uh, a lot of children are feeling lost, I think. In, um, I think so too, yeah. And I don't know what well, to do. I, I have, I can look at my own experience and give you an answer. Being someone who is extremely sensitive, I'm synesthetic, I'm psychic to boot, and all the above. So I was in public school, private school, homeschooled, and a whole bunch of different varieties of everything. All different types of homeschooling too. Like we had a curriculum and then eventually we did what was called unit learning. Of all the different stuff that I have approached and I actually homeschooled all six of my younger siblings and I homeschooled my children as well. Um, but they also have had public school as and charter school stuff too. Every kid is different, my dear. You need to really decide this with your son and he needs the ability to change his mind. 
because parents they go in and they're like all right we're going we're getting into the private school and blah blah blah. i'm paying all this money and then hey it turns out it sucks <laughs> and i'm miserable and now the mom and dad's like well too bad we just paid for the whole year kids need to be able to to move with the flow change and try new things so that they can make decisions for themselves and this empowers them to make decisions as healthy adults so in my opinion unit learning was the very best for me because my parents asked me what do you really love in the whole wide world and i said birds actually i said birds i love birds i want to learn about birds and so they got me and uh, they got me a little uh internship basically i was volunteering at the local avery and i was there for two years and i pulled all the subjects out of that one experience i pulled math i pulled science writing i pulled art i pulled english and grammar and everything out of working with birds and i raised over five thousand birds in two years of all different species from all over the world and i learned so much and i made such a great incredible a friend and my mentor, Bruce, the guy who owned the place. So, you know, that was probably the best experience I had, but you need to really sit with your son and, and give him all these varieties and options. He might like to play with a few different things, but again, he needs the chance to be able to change his mind. And that this is, this is like, I, I always say modern medicine is individualized medicine, not big grand everybody has to do this thing that's crazy <laughs> but same with education modern education is individualized education and so the that's the approach and i can't give you like an answer for your son your son's gonna give you the answer <laughs> yeah. yes because i was thinking of taking him to the local lion place yeah because he loves cats, cats. do it that'll be unit learning and so he can go and he'll really get to know the cats he'll get to talk to all these guys and say all right we're going to bring our notebook and we're going to make this really fun and we're going to get as much info as we can and we're going to pull out math and we're going to pull out writing and we're going to pull out science from this that's unit learning and it's wonderful i found it to be um, the very best type of learning for myself and and much of my siblings enjoyed it as well as to, uh, too and they're quite different than i am Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you're so quite welcome. Thank you. thank you, Janine. Okay. Um, all right, Mickey. Mickey. Hi, Mickey. You want to unmute yourself, Mickey? Unmute yourself, dear. Okay. Sorry, I was Hi. muted. Thank you so much. I've been following you, Elizabeth, for a couple of years, and oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, I'm so I, I am. I don't have a real specific question because it's such big energy that we're dealing with, but I am being called through my guidance and I have new guidance that's galactic, but I'm having a hard time yet making the connection. And I'm just curious, what, what am I supposed to know? Because I'm feeling called to do something. I know exactly what it is. Big. Yeah, and, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm completely okay, but I'm not exactly sure what. It's time now. So your ancestry, genetic ancestry, is actually from Orion. And a lot of the people on the planet um, who have had ancestry that comes from anywhere near Africa at all, has an Orion background. You're coming from what's called the Dogon people. And the Dogon people were not evolved here on this planet. They were evolved from a trio of habitated planets in the Orion system around the star Betelgeuse before it got huge and crazy looking. They were, this was who we call the Lemurians, but there were actually three groups of people from that, not just the Lemurians. And the planet Lemuria was a massive planet and everybody knew the star was going to go nuts and none of their planets would be habitable and they were invited here to Earth. The first people on the Earth weren't even Homo sapiens, they were Lemurians. And one of those groups was the Dogon. Now, the gift of the Dogon is a genetic power. It's called the Violet Flame. 
and through your voice and through your hands and your eyes, this light, it's your inheritance. This light can heal anything. It can dissolve cancer. It can dissolve pain and agony. It brings people together. Let me give you an example. I had this beautiful man. And, you know, normally I can't physically see the color of someone's beautiful skin, but um, uh, this guy's accent kind of gave him away, right? He was clearly Jamaican. <laughs> and he says, hey, I just want to really thank you and blah, blah, blah. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, what's my next step, right? Same exact question. Something's coming through. It's galactic. I don't even know what's happening to me. And I said, do you, do you go to church? And he said, yeah. And I said, do you sometimes get compelled to go up there and speak to the crowd? He's like, actually, yeah. And it, cause he's got this gorgeous voice. And I said, do you understand that you can heal the whole entire church full of people with your voice? And he said, yes, but I did not believe it until now until you've told me that this is true. And I said, it's much more than that. It's a quality of light. It's the violet flame that moves through the embodiment. And a lot of the time, souls who've had Orion experiences will incarnate in physical bodies that match that skill. And so that's why certain people can speak, sing, or look at someone through the gaze of their eyes and people will feel healed. They'll get a rush of light from that person. This is your gift and you're gonna be able to use it in a lot of ways, but use it first in alchemy. Weave it into your emails, weave it into your voice, weave it into the things you touch. Transmute things with it. If something energetically isn't quite right, Use the violet flame through your heart, your hands, your eyes, your voice, and shift it, transmute it into a new type of frequency. And then if you'd like to, open portals. You can use your front door as your first portal and say, all right, front door, you are now a portal of violet flame. That is my inheritance, and I ask you to do this for me. And your door will become a portal of violet flame, and it will literally do things like shift and dissolve everything from bad bacteria to bad viruses to bad energies, demonic presences, you name it. You are literally a pure of fire. We happen to be talking about purification today, but this is your inheritance. This is your gift. You can actually, purify anything. I actually do this for a living. So I am a mind body medicine practitioner and I have clients all over the world and I am amazed myself sometimes when I'm just doing this on the screen yeah. and they say it's all gone. So I, I do do it, but I'm, I'm also hearing this galactic voice saying, I'm supposed to be with large groups of people. I agree. Yeah. So, get, so, so do some free calls every week, right? Do a free call every week. If you've got an hour or half an hour, do yeah. a free call, invite as many people as possible, tell them to bring their friends and say, I'm just simply doing a massive giant purification healing. Okay. Bring whatever you have to the table, bring your trauma, bring your cancer, bring your illness, bring your whatever to the table and we're gonna clear it. And then you'll get bigger and bigger and bigger crowds. But the other thing you can do on your own is zoom out, let the earth be about this big in front of you and purify her do this that's as a gift great idea God. that's the other piece so do both and i like this that gonna, thank you this is going to help so many people to purify and they will gain this ability to remember thank you this is You're so welcome. great because i was walking around confused and i knew that it's supposed to be a lot of people i'm not afraid of that but i wasn't sure exactly how to get there so yeah you do it through service and it'll be perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. That's wonderful, oh, Mickey. So welcome, Mickey. Keep me posted. Awesome. All right. One last question from Beth. Thank well, hello, Beth. Hi, how are you? 
I'm so good. Nice to see you. You are so amazing, Alara. Thank you for picking me. Um, you are so amazing, Elizabeth. You just blow my mind. But anyway. You blow my mind, Beth. I love you. Oh, boy. Well, you know, I thought, I'm glad I heard her say that, that, you know, she's working on extending her life because if anything happens now, I'm going to be prepared so that if I hear like, what, she, what, if you just leave, I'm going to be like, okay, she said that this was a possibility. She's going to work on not letting that happen, but at least I know. Okay. So yeah, I won't go far. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I was going to maybe go a different direction, but yeah. you're on such a role with, um, you know, people's planetary heritage and, and their missions, maybe just one more of those. Oh, I think so. I trust you, whatever comes up for you. And well, I believe you are very Syrian. And let me describe the Syrians, because I think, I, so the way that I share information about galactic peoples and history is literally from my very own remembrance and experiences. I do not read other people's stuff at all, actually. And so I, that just happens to be me. Um, I don't tend to go seek out other people's perspectives on this. And there was a reason why. And I think it's simply because I needed to be able to share just simply what I remember as I remember it. That being said, the Syrians are engineers of consciousness. And this is not the only star experience you've had by any means. But this is the biggest one, and it's the closest one to your human experience. Now, the Syrians, like so many different planets, went through quite a planetary war, a lot like ours. Through subjugation and corruption, they ended up finding a power source on their planet, a very different element that we don't have here. Mm. And it would release a lot of powerful radiation. And they had two camps. One camp said, we're going to use this as a grand, awesome weapon, and we're going to destroy all our enemies. But of course, through jealousy and greed, the enemies ended up being some of their own people as well. And then, of course, the other camp who said, we're going to use this power to heal, right? And we, we want to use it to help heal people. Well, this is familiar to all of us. And this dynamic of power over or power with is a huge polarity for us to heal. And through your genetics and through your history, a lot of that's going to show up in your life of, well, what do I have power over? Do I really want to have power over anything? What has power over me? What kind of power do I have with people, places, things, or situations? Do I use this kind of power to do things for and with people? And this is the lesson of the Syrian experience through engineering consciousness, through incredible details of light. The Syrians could weave light and manifest it into the 3D and turn it into extraordinary technology. We're talking about 12 dimensional processors and things that are literally sound sci-fi, but really actually physically exist. Mm. But what happened? Well, there was once a king and a queen, and this is key for you right now, Beth, to know, because this is part of your heritage and it's part of what's happening. The healing of the masculine and feminine. Mm. And we had a king and a queen on Sirius. And they played different roles than we're used to kings and queens playing. But they had a king and a queen. They were married. The king wanted to use all this power as a weapon. The queen wanted to use it to heal and collaborate. He got so angry and jealous that she would not go with him on these things that he had her murdered. Mm. There is a healing happening from this, especially from those who have a Syrian lineage of needing to be willing to be in your power as a feminine being, Kali, who cuts the heads off of those who refuse to be humble to the divine feminine. Wow. After Kali is the divine mother who embraces those who are willing to be humble and loves them unconditionally no matter what. And then from there, the masculine is tempered into a state of pure collaboration. 
in order to end the wound of power over that is literally causing a rift between the masculine and feminine and what is happening to the men they are dying of an existential starvation mm. they need the feminine to survive the feminine also is realizing we can't get our job done unless we have these guys right and so there is a tempering be willing to stand in your power and allow that righteous anger of requiring humility from yourself and all of your masculine inner selves and the masculine around you and be and right after that allow this next piece to arise as unconditional love there is nothing you could ever do to stop me from loving you mm. and then after that is the act of collaboration allow this sort of piece to to really come in from your Syrian heritage and all the other heritages that you have, because every one of them had something similar. The Pleiadians nearly committed global genocide on their own people. Everybody, you know, really thinks all these folks were practically angels. Well, guess what? Angels have even been jerks to each other too. So <laughs> it's not we look lyrans were the worst we're the ones who like destroyed planets because we got off the bed in the wrong way <laughs> so um but this is key this is a dynamic that is going to help heal the whole galactic and of course when you do this inside of yourself it opens up for the possibility to be available to all human consciousness through indra's net so this is the message I have for you from your galactic peace, but specifically the healing of the masculine feminine in you. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you, you may know. have to go back and watch or listen to this again. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. This, that was something. Thank you. You're quite welcome, Beth. And 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 when I go back and listen and just like hold with all of that and and okay, I don't. Yeah, you'll be able to see it move through you, work through you. It'll heal your ancestry too. I know that's been a big piece on your plate. Yeah, it'll help them too because they had their own issues with the masculine, feminine, all the way back. Yeah. And I've had dreams about the masculine and the feminine and yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for being willing to do it. I'm so proud for you. You're so wise. Thank you. My thank pleasure. you, Beth. Awesome, good. Wow, it's just so interesting what people are, are experiencing in their lives and what their next steps are. It's just so interesting to see and hear about. I just love it. It's like so much change is coming. So much is possible. There's so much potential for everybody. It's like step up, people. Just step up and take that next step, right? But Absolutely. I, I, I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so just like, I just want to say that like all the people that you just spoke to and then everybody else you didn't speak to, it's like you look at a person, you see this person, but who they are is so much more. And it just blows you away. Like everything you said to everybody, it just shows you how much is in each person. So mm -hmm. I just have to say that because it's, <laughs> you know, you get blown away by that. Yeah, it's absolutely. Mind -blowing. And each person yeah. is so unique. It's like a precious book in a library and there's only one copy and that's you. <laughs> Yep, and each one of us is special, unique, and we're, you know, we all have, you know, what lights us up, what makes us feel good. And so, I don't know. I mean, I think Elizabeth is doing such a wonderful job with everything in the world that she's doing. I don't know how she does it all with, 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 her, <laughs> with her family, you know, kids and everything. I have no idea how you do it all. Um, but if you would like to, you know, work more with Elizabeth, with some of her teachings, Elizabeth, we're going to talk about the special offer that you have this time around, right? So it's available at alara.at forward slash show forward slash Elizabeth 10. And we have some new, um, I guess, pieces to this, right? The 94 Ancient Templates of Wisdom, which you talked about a little bit uh, during the call, navigating the dimensions of consciousness, remembering DNA, which is all the, all the new stuff that you've been talking to us about. So can you tell us a little bit more about this package for those who would like to 
get more of you, more access to yes. you or more of you. Absolutely. I'm going to pull it up so I can read it together and describe it to you because I did something pretty wild that I don't normally do. And I added the whole set of 94 ancient templates of wisdom. I taught 94 classes on each one of these. They're about 20 to 30 minutes long. You'll have to forgive me because when I did it, it was like nine years ago and I had a lot more ego guys. So you'll be able to tell, I'm sorry. But <laughs> um, that being said, the reason I'm giving them to you, I had actually built an entire business around them and then realized that something was off. So I had to walk away from that whole body of work. But I finally understand why I taught them. <laughs> and there's more than that. There's a color code map because each has a color and a frequency. There is um, other classes about the last four ancient templates, which go a little deeper into them because they're very profound and important. But I'm actually giving you all these classes, all 94 of these, because I want you to work on dissolving them. I want you to go into each of them and treasure them, understand them, understand that these were born of experience, trauma, and ego from our galactic ancestors and beyond, our multidimensional ancestry. And that, it, this is, that they are born of the experiences of one galaxy, this one. And that if you're willing to dissolve them, what you have at your fingertips then is not such a narrow view, but rather a universal view. And you'll be able to access that. You'll also be able to understand how your traumas and your genetic traumas are anchoring into some of these as a foundation and why dissolving the foundation will help to bring the house down and clean up the house so that you can attain the homo luminous state. That's the goal. So that's why I'm including 94 classes and that's just the beginning of the package. The second set of classes is actually a duo that I just taught called Navigating the Dimensions of Consciousness. The first class, I talk about each of the 12 dimensions as I have known them and as my teachers have described and known them. So it's not just my experience at all. But I describe each of them and what you can expect from each of these dimensions, how to access these things. Because you have full access, that's your heritage, that's your DNA. The second class out of that, I talk about the pitfalls of each of them. And that's actually, to me, the most profound. I'll give you an example. When you get to the seventh dimension, there's this pitfall called, why does God let bad things happen to good people? There's a pitfall of consciousness there. It's a trap because that's not real. And there's a way to undo the pitfall. And these pitfalls will be really familiar, like that one but you'll be able to move through them and dissolve these basically false concepts so that you can have more access to these dimensions. Because the, again, that's your heritage. That's where we're going to build from is all 12 dimensions. And then the third piece is remembering DNA, the history and practicality of the temple of light. It's a history class where I go into what I've talked about a little bit today, but I really detail it out a lot more. And then I talk about the corruption and what happened to the experiment in a more precise way. But I also really get you to understand what DNA is as a technology and how precious it really is. The next class is called Creating and Maintaining Spiritual Power. It's literally a class on mysticism. Power is light, light is power. I want you to be able to create and maintain it. And there's a lot of techniques and of course, many failures that I like to always bring to the table of how I screwed up so bad because <laughs> it's so useful. Then we have quantum remote viewing training. A lot of people have been asking me for this class. So this is important. It's a, it's a way to do proper remote viewing, but I teach you how to remote view anything, including the quantum. And when you take this class, it's guided. It's like a guided meditation, but you'll find that it's really a lot easier than you think. And so if you felt like, hey, remote viewing and quantum stuff, that's way out of my ability. No, it's not. Take this class and you'll see how much easier it really is. 
then I'm going to give you this three minds workshop and an ebook that I wrote that goes along with it. This is three, two hour long classes about the brain, heart and gut, how they really work. I want you to use your body. What is born of the DNA is the body and the embodiment is what we're going to take into enlightenment, into an enlightened age, into homo luminous. We take our bodies with us. And this is the only way for us to move in this world and to move through what we're experiencing and to survive it is with the body. We must do it with the body. That's number one. So I want to give you access back to your brain, heart, and gut and your operating system so that you can heal and begin to go really deep. And in this, I teach you how to heal your mind, how to heal your heart, and how to heal your gut. Just be open because some of the things I tell you as today, as usual, there's some shocking and usual stuff that probably you haven't even realized or heard of yet. And I hope that it'll be really interesting for you. Then I ended up becoming in anthropology. I became one of the very first anthropologists in the world to develop a heuristic theory, which is a overarching theory. Mine was about change. How does culture change? This is a heuristic Theory. Well, I built a model and a method that keeps proving the theory, but the model I used was a predictive model and it worked well through a lot of different realizations. I boxed it because it was too dangerous. I was told I either join the CIA or I'll get blackmailed and talked into all this stuff. I either join the CIA and change it from the inside out. I'm really serious. That was a real conversation I had with my professor. She was the one who told me, you should join the CIA so you can change it from the inside out. And I said, not unless uh, like they kill me <laughs> if I do that. And then I said, I just want to be a professor. And she said, no, it's not going to work. You're going to get blackmailed into giving them all your stuff. And I said, well, I know exactly what path to take then. I'm going to put it in a box and never share it with anyone. And I haven't until now. I developed instead of a predictive model, I implemented my model and my method into a discernment process that I call the body oracle technique. I want you to be able to find your own answers so that you don't feel like you need to depend on people like me, but that we can have fun together and seeing lots of things because we do need each other to see ourselves I need help to see myself. But the body oracle technique can give you an ability to really discern reality and your next steps more easily using your body, but also using my methods in a very subtle way. So I'll give you this as part of this package because I think it's so profound and simple, yet really important to know is that this ability to discern and to know what the next step is. Then the next piece is Empaths and entities training. I told you that dealing with demons is a lot easier than you think. And you empaths out there, you feel so much. You have a superpower. I want to show you how it works. And I want to show all of you how to handle all these entities. Any entity at all, including crazy people who are mean to you, right? And they end up becoming loved anyway, right? Because they're, they exist. They have a place. But I'm going to show you how, to, how important that is, how to have your field back and not be oppressed anymore, how to help the people around you too. Then the next piece is quantum healing for infectious disease. You know, I can't give you medical info, can't give you medical advice, but what I can do is teach you how to approach your body and your reality in a much better way. It turns out that viruses and bacteria are intelligent. I want to show you how to talk to them and learn from them. Your body is actually animated fully because of bacteria and viruses. And this is so important and so key. And I want to give you back that information and help you to learn how to do quantum healing. All of you know how to do this deep within your soul. I'm just going to help you remember. In fact, everything in this package, you know, I'm just reminding you. And then, of course, the last piece is anyone who gets a package gets to join my 
community and get on these community calls every month. The last Sunday of every month, we just had one. It was very beautiful. It was profound. Every month is different. We build a pillar of light together. We do some great work for humanity. We bring the personal experience to the universal and we do beautiful work together every month. And so I'd love for you to come join me and join my online emailing community and let's get some work done. So that's yes. our package today. <laughs> that's, wow, that's powerful. And just, you know, just the 94 templates alone, that is going to give so much wisdom, but all the rest of them as well, that there's just so much information here, but it's not just information, it's practical information that you can use in your life. You know, that's what it's about. So it's about practical information that you can use in your life to help you move forward, right? So that you can be that hum human luminous being of light, right? Because that's what you are. And it's about, that's how we can start to clear some of those triggers as well, is through the knowledge and wisdom that we are, again, like Elizabeth said, remembering, right? So she's just reminding us of all the wisdom that is within us. So we are more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. And Elizabeth is showing that to us in this package and in everything she does, right? So she's showing that we are much more powerful. There's one of the, one something you mentioned really early on, and I think somebody asked a question in the chat, Elizabeth. I'm just going to really quickly, because I know we're like way yeah, over time, right? But it was about, um, it's about uh, consent. Yeah. Right? So I know people are going to have that question, but okay, so how do we, give consent and how do we say no right Could you really touch on that a little bit yeah and Dakey says is consent what humanity is building into the foundation of this cosmic awakening yes this this would be like our gift our template right is consent so for example when i do consent i make a conscious effort to say do I feel a yes about this? I, I, and that's the body oracle piece. Mm -hmm. What does my mind say? Pros and cons of doing a yes on this. Pros and cons from my, or how does my heart feel about it? The brain's good at pros and cons. The heart's good at body memory. And then the gut has to do with your survival and thriving on Gaia. And so they have three very different capabilities, but I asked my whole body, is this a yes? I want all three brains to say yes. If not, I might need more information. Mm -hmm. So there might be a maybe. We might not all get along. There might need to be more experience. But what I really want is a full body experience of yes. And then if I have a full body no, there's going to be contraction. And a yes is a very open feeling. So we need to get used to what is yes, what is no, what is discernment. That being said, then, of course, we go into a state where we become our soul, the soul in charge, the commander, the animator of the body, the creator being that runs the show. You are not your DNA. DNA is something that you are in and experiencing reality through all 12 dimensions. But you are your soul's essence arisen from source. It's intelligent. You can depend on that. That is the core of light that moves through the whole body, the zero point, the shashumna. Mm -hmm. And from there, we speak. We speak as commanders, as creator beings, we speak. I do not consent. I will stand in my power. I won't resist. I won't expect. I won't be attached and I won't judge, but I will not consent to this. This is Kali. This is the divine Rama standing, saying, no, you cannot pass. There is nothing more powerful than that. Mm -hmm. And let's say you do consent, you open, it's a celebration. Consent is a celebration. And we can consent to amazing and very strange things that end up becoming really interesting and powerful. And we can also experience saying, no, I don't consent. I don't consent to you coming and abducting me. I don't consent to implants. I don't consent to this, you know, electromagnetic mind taking over mine. No. And this creates a field of power. Mm -hmm. And from there, of course, we move into what is the next step from here? 
Am I going to put my effort into resisting this and, and trying to dismantle it? Because honestly, a lot of this stuff we're resisting and trying to dismantle is dismantling itself. We don't even have to worry about that. I'm going to put my effort into the solutions, into the health, into the preservation of humanity, into the movement towards homo luminous and the purification of myself. And, and when we do that, as the Buddha said, enlightenment is not enough. You must be in service to all beings. Mm -hmm. Enlightenment is in all things. It is already, you're revealing it when you stand in consent or when you say, I do not give consent. So consent is a foundation, absolutely. But it goes along in a triad of unconditional love and universal compassion the one universal compassion says, if it exists, it has a place in the universe. And it is loved. <laughs> and that's the human homo sapien to homo luminous experience. That's what will build all of our new experiences from. And it's the gift we give to the universe through our own suffering. We've learned these things and we have created our own template of wisdom and that's what it is wow awesome thank you beautiful my pleasure yeah awesome and so again you know if you'd like to learn more about elizabeth's work you can check out her package which is available at laura.at four slash show forward slash elizabeth 10 <laughs> i hope that's what it is yes it is and for the next for the, for the next 24 hours there is the 24 hour special which you, you get 10 percent discount use discount code tacs10 again that'll only be available for 24 hours so please do take advantage of that and there's so much in this package that you will learn so much and you will so much will be revealed to you so much will be opened up to you so be willing to receive it right be willing to receive it and it is time <clears throat> Please put the URL in the chat. Okay, sorry, one second. Um, and so there's so much that is possible for each and every one of us, right? And part of that is Elizabeth showing us, teaching us, sharing her wisdom. But this, again, wisdom is all within us. It's not something brand new per se. We, we know it. She's just reminding us of it. And so when you are accessing the package, accessing the wisdom, come from that place of, oh, yeah, I'm remembering this. I know this. This is wisdom that I have within me. I'm remembering it, right? And I think when you do that, you will have a much easier time put it, uh, wrapping your head around it. <laughs> because I think there's a lot of stuff that's going to be like, wow, wow. I think you're going to be saying wow a lot when you're listening or watching to some of this, some of this stuff, right? So do I, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> mind blown, right? Time, time to get your mind blown, but also it's time for you to step forward on your path and step forward on in, in your knowing and you are a sovereign being and we have to keep reminding ourselves that we have the power within us okay so you know we are much more than we than this little flesh and bone body there's so much more so remember that and um wow thank you elizabeth i know we went way over but thank you thank you thank you this was another wonderful oh, call. it always speeds by we never even notice until Two hours I know, later. but there's just so much. And so you definitely want to watch or listen to this again because there was so much that Elizabeth shared and not just from, you know, um, you know, the, 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 the content, you know, but also from the questions that people asked, right? Because even that information is also relevant to all of us as well. So please don't think that just because your question didn't get answered that you didn't get the, your answer. Maybe that answer was given in part through the other questions that were asked. Okay, so please do remember mm -hmm. that. So, because I, you know, sometimes people are just like waiting. It's, I just want to, I just want to ask my question, but then you're missing all the other wonderful information and wisdom that is coming through. Yes, there's a replay. I will be sending out the replay. Um, if you're on my email list, obviously, you know, you'll you will get the replay shortly. It'll be on the replay page. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on the podcast. It's on Facebook, <laughs> and the in the group, and also on my profile. It's there as well. You know, so, but so it'll be everywhere, right? So thank you so much. And thank you everybody for all your questions. This is awesome, 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 awesome. <laughs> and thank you, Elizabeth, so much. Thank you. Namaste, Alara. I love you.
I love you too. Namaste and namaste everyone else. This was fantastic. Mind blown, right? So until next time, may you all continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. <laughs>